the butter and egg controversy. In this video, I am going to debunk the theory that if you want non-stick sliding eggs, all you need is a lot of butter. We're gonna do three things in this video. First, I'm gonna prove that there is more to getting non-stick sliding eggs than just butter. Second, if there is more to a non-stick sliding egg and you cook in stainless steel, cast iron, or carbon steel, we're gonna go through the other tips that are necessary to get non-stick sliding eggs, especially if you've gotten rid of your non-stick chemical coated pan in exchange for one of these others, great thing to do. And third, we may get into the weeds of carbon steel seasoning just a bit as we go. Let's jump in and get started here. Now, what is the butter and egg controversy? Lots of times around here when I review carbon steel skillets, I will take a brand new carbon steel skillet, they come in shiny and silvery, I will season the skillet, and then I will cook a fried egg. And I always use butter when I fry those eggs. And the goal is to get an egg to release without a spatula and slide around like a hockey puck. And if I'm on my game, I nail the flip as well. I call it the fried egg test. Every time I do that, I get feedback. And it's always some version of, with that much butter in the pan, of course an egg slides around. Of course the egg is nonstick. In this video, I am going to prove to you that there is much more to it than merely having a lot of butter in the pan. I'm gonna use this guy as our subject pan. This is a Debouille 11 inch Mineral B Pro. And you notice a very dark black shiny seasoning on this guy. Relatively new pan, I seasoned it um, a week or so ago. And normally I tell people to just season once and start cooking. Um, every now and then I will turn a pan into what I call a work of art pan. And I seasoned this one multiple times and it got a very slick, shiny, dark black coating on this pan. I will uh, do a different video and get into kind of how and why I did that um, at some other time. But after I seasoned that pan, I did my own fried egg test and took some video of it and sliding, no surprise there. But in as much as this pains me to do, I cooked a second egg, same pan, same burner on the stovetop, 10 minutes apart, same carton of eggs from the grocery store, and same stick of butter. Got the butter melted in there, cracked my egg in, and if you don't cook correctly, things will stick. Oh, I almost need to avert my eyes. That is painful to watch. So one stuck and one didn't, and I used over a tablespoon of butter for each of those. I think we have proven that it is not only the butter that makes the difference in sliding a fried egg. Now butter is a factor, but it is only one of about five factors or five hacks, I like to call them, for non-stick eggs. Um, there may be plenty of other ways to cook eggs out there and get non-stick results, but I know for a fact that these work. And how do I know that? Because in 40 or 50 YouTube videos, uh, often when I'm using a pan for the first time, I do exactly these and I get non-stick sliding egg results. Uh, these tips, they work for uh, Western omelets, scrambled eggs, fried eggs, and even French omelets. And they work for non-stick eggs in stainless steel cookware, cast iron cookware, and of course, carbon steel. Hack number one, take your eggs out of the fridge and let them warm up before you cook them. My fridge is at about 34 degrees Fahrenheit, and that is only two degrees above freezing. My eggs are almost frozen. You don't want to cook an almost frozen egg. The TV chefs, when they do those omelet episodes, you always see that basket of farm fresh eggs on their countertop. Those were probably at the body temperature of a chicken a few hours before that. 
Most of our eggs come from a supermarket and they sit in our refrigerators and they are almost frozen. So for example, if you're gonna do a couple of fried eggs, take your eggs out of the fridge, go ahead and crack them into a bowl and let them warm up for 10 minutes or so. Or you can just leave the eggs out for 20 minutes or so. Or if you're in a hurry, put them in a bowl and run some warm water on them and let them warm up for a few minutes. Hack number two, use a good quality pan that is in good condition. And here, if you're using cast iron or carbon steel, you want to make sure that your seasoning is in good shape. If you're using stainless steel, you want to make sure that your cooking surface is very clean. And here I want to note that if you're using that carbon steel or cast iron, you do not need a shiny dark pan like this. I'm an advocate of just season once and start cooking. That's what this pan is. You notice that the seasoning is lighter brown, it's blotchy, it's not uniform, it's not dark black. I have never stuck an egg in that pan. That is a Debouille Mineral B um, omelet pan, as I showed in the video. I got non-stick French omelets in that carbon steel skillet with just one round of seasoning. And getting out into the weeds of carbon steel seasoning a little bit here, one reason I advocate for people doing the season once and just start cooking method is if you do spend four or five hours turning a pan into something like this and you stick an egg like I showed, earlier in the video, you will naturally think that there is something wrong with your seasoning and you will go back and re-season that pan and you will kind of go down the wrong path rather than focusing on your cooking technique, which is what we're going through right now. I think your time is much better spent learning these techniques and then later on down the road, if you want to, once you're familiar with your carbon steel and know a little bit about cooking in it, if you want to darken in your pan, then have at it. Now I talk about having a clean pan here. What I'm talking about is you do not want to try and get nonstick eggs after cooking something like bacon. Lots of people like to cook bacon, take the bacon out, crack an egg in the pan. There is always gunk left in the pan when you cook bacon. I don't care what pan you're using. And those eggs will often just fuse to those little bacon bits. You really need a clean pan to slide your eggs. Tip number three, and this may be the most important of all, you've got to preheat your pan properly and cook at the correct temperature. So here, this one is where you need to egg experiment just a little bit because every stovetop is a little bit different. There are different sized burners and every carbon steel skillet is a little bit different from between the different manufacturers. You're gonna have to try a couple of times and get your preheating done correctly. Some tips though, um, on a gas stove top, move your pan around a little bit as it preheats. And carbon steel and cast iron, as much as I love those cooking materials, they do not spread heat very rapidly and evenly. So you have to take a little bit of extra care to get them heated as evenly as possible. Believe it or not, on a bigger gas burner, there is a relatively cooler space in the middle of that ring of fire. And if you just put a pan right on top of that burner and don't move it around, you can have a 70 or 80 degree temperature differential between the middle of that pan and the edge of the pan. And I've actually had this happen before. I put an egg in there and it'll be sliding. Half the egg will be sliding and half will be stuck. It's often because the pan is not heated evenly. Now, if I'm gonna cook a French omelet, Another thing I do, because you need to be double extra careful when you do all these tips for French omelets, I will go ahead and preheat the pan for a minute, minute and a half, and then turn the burner off and let that heat kind of diffuse through the pan while I'm getting my other ingredients ready, and then preheat the pan again when I'm ready to cook my omelet. Now on induction stoves, it's often the inverse of the problem you get on the gas stoves, because induction stoves, you can have a smaller coil, and if you put a bigger pan on that smaller coil, you can get a hot spot right in the middle and cooler, cooler temperatures out towards the edges. So there you may want to preheat your pan a little bit more slowly than you would on other cooktops, but make sure you get your pan heated 
evenly before you cook your eggs. Now, what about the proper cooking temperature? This is going to overlap with tip number four, use butter, just a little bit here. But for the proper cooking temperature, if you have a surface probe thermometer, uh, for me, I've found that if I take a couple of readings and the pan, it's a moving target because the pan is heating up, but if it gets somewhere around 250 degrees and then I put my butter in, that generally works pretty well. Um, if you don't have a surface probe thermometer, what you can do is flick some water in the pan and if it rolls around like little ball bearings, that's probably actually a little bit too hot, but it's a good place to start and your eggs won't stick and you can kind of dial back on uh, subsequent eggs after that, or you can use your butter. So tip four is to use butter when you cook your eggs. And here we see that butter is an important factor, it's just not the only factor. Now, why is butter so important? Um, a, it's delicious, but B, it's a very smart condiment because it knows two things. The first is, it knows if your pan is preheated to the correct temperature. And second, it knows when to add the eggs to the pan. So let's drill down on this just a little bit more. When you add your butter to the pan, and here I always use a good French tablespoon of butter. And if you're wondering what is a French tablespoon of butter, it's a little bit more than a tablespoon. So when you add your butter to your pan, and you will eventually get the hang of this, if it just kind of slowly and casually melts like this, the pan is too cold. If you put the butter in the pan and it explodes in a flash of steam and splatter all over the place, the pan is too hot. If it melts quickly, but not in a flash, and starts to bubble and crackle, then the pan is just right. Now, that bubbling and crackling is actually very important. What is happening there is that the water content of the butter is boiling and evaporating away. Uh, butter, every brand is a little bit different, but it can be 20% or so water. So when that bubbling subsides, you know that the water content of your butter has evaporated away and you're left with nice butter fat, delicious butter fat. And it turns out there is a window from the time that butter stops bubbling and crackling until it browns 10, 15 seconds later. That 10 second window is a fantastic time to add your eggs to the pan. Now, a couple of other questions often get asked, um, especially regarding that butter. What if you want to use avocado oil or olive oil or some other type of oil? Can you use um, other oils and fats besides butter? Of course you can, but what you're gonna to have to do there is experiment a little and work on your timing because you can use those and get nonstick eggs, but you don't get those indicators with the, uh, with the way the butter melts and the stopping of the crackling to let you know when to add your egg. And adding your eggs correctly is tip number five. If everything has gone smoothly up to this point, we have a, an evenly preheated pan. We have a nice layer of butter fat. We have a room temperature egg. Um, we have plenty of butter in the pan. And we are going to gently lay this egg out kind of on top of that layer of butter fat. I kind of think of it as kind of sliding the egg on top of there, or maybe the egg is a little raft kind of floating on a little micro sea of butter, think of it however you want to, but what you don't want to do is crack an egg and drop it in from six, seven inches above. It will go through that layer of fat and it will hit the pan and confuse to the pan. So you want to lay it out gently onto your little layer of butter there. If you have trouble doing that, what you can do is crack your eggs ahead of time into cups or bowls and then gently lay those out into the pan. And if everything has gone correctly, you should be able to give the pan a little goose and those eggs should release. Now, if you wanna see some more videos about carbon steel cooking, check out the links on this page. Thank you for watching. We'll see you again next time on Uncle Scott's Kitchen.